across the Tasman Sea in New Zealand, their exploits were watched by a coach, Arthur Lydiard, and a runner, Peter Snell, who were poised to employ their own radical tactics to win Olympic gold. Lydiard was the first person that ever told me, Peter, uh, you could be a great runner, you could be even a champion, you could be an Olympian. And uh, that's music to a high achiever's ears to hear someone say that. Most runners of this era continued to follow the interval training favored by Pablo Nuri. Lydiard, a former marathon runner seen here, believed completing long distances at an even pace was better preparation. He had Snell run over 20 miles a day. No middle distance runner had ever done this before. Now Lydiard came along and said, well, we need endurance. He said, if you can get to the stage, I've been able to run my 22 mile course hard and then come back and do the same thing the next day, then you'll be right for anything. And it does get to that. You can actually run that 22 hard and feel great afterwards. But Lydiard's theory went against all the accepted medical advice of the time and put him at odds with the athletics authorities in New Zealand who feared runners like Snell would become burnt out. It just didn't seem to make sense to uh, other coaches running at uh, a slow pace for long distances has nothing to do with the 1500 meters. Like Saruti, Arthur Lydiard believed in using the natural landscape. The steep hills leading up to the Waitakiri Mountains that surrounded Snell's hometown of Auckland were perfect for testing and building his endurance. Running about an hour a day on grassy surfaces until I was conditioned enough to be able to handle longer runs. The first 10 miles, things are going along quite nicely, and then the work up the hill starts to get to you, and that, that's good. You look to your right and you see the, uh, the Tasman Sea and uh, you look over to the left and it's the Pacific Ocean. It's a, a, a great feeling. Under the direction of Lydiard, Snell's training began to strengthen his heart and lower his resting pulse rate. This put him in peak condition. The heart is getting bigger and it's able to push more out with each beat. The average person uh, it's about 70 beats a minute. And so mine eventually got down to about 36. But also, as one starts exercising, there's a long way to go from 36 up to one's maximal heart rate, which is for a young person about 200 beats a minute. This meant Snell would have greater endurance. He could run faster for longer. Going into the 1964 Olympic Games in Tokyo, Snell felt his endurance was so high that he would attempt to win gold in both the 800 and 1500 meters. My problem was that I tie myself in the 800 and not have 